Welcome back to the Mystic Media channel. Here are 10 movies to watch during Gemini season. Let me just share my screen. Okay, so this first movie is Bride Wars. So this movie was released in 2009. So it's fairly recent, not too old. And it features Kate Hudson and Anne Hathaway. Let me just read the storyline. In Manhattan, the lawyer Liv and the school teacher Emma have been best friends since their childhood. They both are proposed to by their boyfriends on the same day, and they plan their wedding parties in the Plaza Hotel using the services of the famous Marion St. Clair, as played by Candace Bergen. However, due to Marion's secretary's mistake, their weddings are scheduled for the same day. Neither of them agrees to change the date and they become enemies, trying to sabotage the wedding party of the rival. Here's the tagline, may the best bride win. So the reason why I chose this is because it takes place during Gemini season. So their weddings are scheduled for June 6th. And Gemini season is a very tight season for getting a wedding schedule at the plaza in this movie, because that's like a highly... Uh, cherished location. So the wedding planner's secretary made a mistake and scheduled them both to get married on June 6th and they're best friends. So of course, that means that they can't attend each other's wedding. So they're expecting one of them to just, you know, fall back and say, I'll choose a different date, but there's no other dates available in June. So then they just become these bitter rivals and they start trying to do things to sabotage each other. So the film is very funny. I definitely recommend watching it if you uh, haven't seen it. It's one of my favorite uh, comedies from the more recent era. So definitely check it out. It's funny as hell. Next movie, Serial Mom. So Serial Mom was released in 1994. And here's the storyline. A picture-perfect middle-class family is shocked when they find out that one of their neighbors is receiving obscene phone calls. The mom takes slights against her family very personally, and it turns out she is indeed the one harassing the neighbor. As other slights befall her beloved family, the body count begins to increase, and the police get closer to the truth, threatening the family's picture-perfect world. The taglines are, every mom wants to be wanted, but not for murder one. She's fabulous, loving, caring mother who happens to be a serial killer. At least she meant well. So this is a wacky comedy. It has some wacky dialogue. Um, it basically centers around uh, Dottie Henkel, uh, who is this redhead. She's receiving obscene phone calls from Kathleen Turner's character. And it's just crazy. I swear Kathleen Turner is playing a Gemini in this movie because she's dealing with two identities. She plays this picture perfect mother, but then is also this violent killer. And she'd be killing people in the worst type of ways too. But it is funny at the same time. So if you're into black comedies, like dark comedies, definitely check this film out. And the dialogue is just so Gemini. And another Gemini um, element is the fact that the mother loves birds. So she watches birds, she feeds birds, and she imitates the sound of birds. Woo-wee, woo-wee. That's what she'd be saying. But yeah, and she has these little catchphrases too, which is very Gemini as well. So definitely check this out. Kathleen Turner plays a really good, does a really good job in the film. It's not her typical role. To, so to see her acting in this way is really a treat. Next film, Casino. So Casino was released in 1995, and the reason why I chose this film is because Robert De Niro's character, Ace Rothstein, is said to be a Gemini in this film. And that comes out through Sharon Stone's character, Ginger, who ends up being his wife. So in the film, she talks about how he's a triple Gemini. And it makes a lot of sense because in the beginning of the film, they talk about Ace's past and how he was a numbers runner and how he was just really good with numbers and he knew all the stats of the athletes in terms of sports gambling and all that type of stuff. So that's very Gemini. 
somebody that's really good with numbers, really good with stats and figures can basically calculate a lot of shit up in their head and how he was all, he had his eyes on everything when it came to managing the Tangiers Casino. So here is the storyline. So this Mar Martin Scorsese film depicts the Janice-like quality of Las Vegas. It has a glittering, glamorous face as well as a brutal, cruel one. Ace Rothstein and Nikki Santoro, mobsters who moved to Las Vegas to make their mark, live and work in this paradoxical world. Paradoxical, that's very Gemini. Seen through their eyes, each as a foil to the other, the details of mob involvement in the casinos of the 70s and 80s are revealed. Ace is the smooth operator of the Tangiers Casino, while Nikki is his boyhood friend and tough strongman, robbing and shaking down the locals. However, they each have a tragic flaw. Ace falls in love with a hustler, Ginger, and Nikki falls into an ever-deepening spiral of drugs and violence. So another Gemini element in this film is the fact that the story is being told from two different perspectives. Ace, played by Robert De Niro, and Nikki, played by Joe Pesci. So throughout the film, it interchanges between um, Ace's narration and Nikki's narration, which is very Gemini. Also, the fact that Ace was able to rationalize getting married to Ginger, even though he knew Ginger didn't love him, was very Gemini as well. So he got married to a woman that he knew didn't love him. He knew he was taking a major risk, but he rationalized it. So that's very Gemini as well. So I'm sure a lot of my viewers have already seen Casino. But if anybody has not seen it, I definitely recommend it. It's one of the best movies ever made, if you ask me. Next film, Napoleon Dynamite. So the reason why I chose Napoleon Dynamite is because it deals with high school, but also it's a very wacky, offbeat film. It has a lot of wacky humor in it. So here's the storyline. Preston, Idaho's most curious resident, Napoleon Dynamite, lives with his grandma, who I feel like is a Gemini in the film, and his 32-year-old brother, who I swear is a Leo, who cruises chat rooms for ladies and works to help his best friend Pedro snatch the student body president title from Mean Teen, t mean teen Summer Wheatley. So here's the tagline. He's out to prove he's got nothing to prove. Same planet, different flipping world. I'm not sure if I mentioned that this was released in 2004. So one of the wacky parts of this film is the fact that they seem very behind the times and you don't know if they purpose, like they did that because of Idaho, they live in a small town or because they just wanted the film to just be very offbeat like that. So the first time I saw Napoleon Dynamite, I didn't even watch the whole thing because it went over my head. I didn't get it. But because my kids love this movie so much, they got me into it. And I started to really love it. I think it was the second time I saw it. It made sense. But it's a movie that really doesn't make sense as well. So there's some really wacky parts in the film. It's a movie that is good to watch if you're bored. It's good to watch if you're high or a little tipsy. Because it will really just send you off into some other place. And it, it'll just have you in stitches. So another Gemini element is the fact that there's the brother Kip, who's Napoleon's brother, and then there's this Uncle Rico that comes to uh, stay with them. And Uncle Rico is this dude that, you know, he can't get over the past. Like his heyday was high school because he was a football player. But anyway, the sibling and uncle theme is very Gemini as well. All right, so moving along. Sugar Hill. So Sugar Hill was released in 1993, and it features Wesley Snipes and Michael Wright. They play two brothers, which is very Gemini. So here's the storyline. Hardened, uncompromising drug dealer Romello Scuggs decides to quit his scumbag profession so he may start a new life with his girlfriend. However, he soon learns getting out is nowhere near as easy as getting in, as everything gradually builds up to end in tragedy. And here's the tagline. He wanted power, he wanted revenge, now he just wants out. So that's a very typical story, you know, the gangster story movie where, you know, the gangster wants to get out of the life. But 
what's really good about this film is that it's very gritty. It, it's very realistic. And the dialogue is very good. I feel like this is one of Wesley Snipes' better films. And Michael Wright does a really good job playing a supporting role, playing his brother. So you get to see the sibling rivalry in there, but also the brotherly love. And this is one of those films that will go back into the past when they were children, which is really good as well. It has some sad parts in the film as well. So I definitely recommend watching Sugar Hill during Gemini season, especially because of the brothers theme. Next film, Cooley High. Now I'm sure a lot of my uh, older viewers have seen this movie. Cooley High was released in 1975. Here's the storyline. In 1964, a group of high school friends, very Gemini, who live on the near north side of Chicago enjoy life to the fullest, parties, hanging out, meeting new friends. Then life changes for two of the guys when they meet a pair of career criminals, AKA thugs, and I always say Gemini is the thug of the Zodiac. So here's the two thugs right here. Here's actor Glenn Turman. And they actually chose real thugs to play this, um, these roles. And they look like real thugs. So these dudes are the real deal. And they ended up in the, in the film, Glenn Turman's character, Preach, and Lawrence Hilton Jacobs' character, Coach Eats, they get caught up hanging with them one night. So it's a very good film. It has some funny moments. It has a banging ass soundtrack if you love oldies. But it also has a very sad scene. And if you've seen this film, you know what sad scene I'm talking about, where they had the song, It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday, Lord Have Mercy. But yeah, that, like this movie will have you in tears. So uh, here's the tagline. Where the student body was a chick named Veronica, the senior prom was a belly rub, and the class of 64 ran a permanent crap game in the men's room. Shooting craps, that's very Gemini as well. All right, next movie. 21. So 21 was released in 2008. The reason why I chose this film is because it deals with counting cards in order to have an edge in gambling, casino gambling, namely the game Blackjack. And I've observed over the years that Blackjack is a Gemini game. I've asked a few Geminis what their favorite casino game is, and they have all said Blackjack. And it makes sense because Gemini is really good at calculating things in their head and thinking, you know, thinking fast. And Blackjack is a fast thinking game. I could never do it because I can't think like that under pressure. I don't like having that pressure and people, you know, waiting on me to say hit or pass or whatever like that. But yeah, so the whole counting cards theme is very Gemini. As you can see, uh, Lawrence Fishburne plays in the film. He plays this security executive that's trying to bust do right here. But basically the storyline goes, Ben Campbell is a young, highly intelligent student at MIT in Boston who strives to succeed. Wanting a scholarship to transfer to Harvard School of Medicine with the desire to become a doctor, Ben learns that he cannot afford the $300,000 for the four to five years of schooling as he comes from a poor working class background. Make the long story short, Intrigued by the desire to make money, Ben joins his new friends on secret weekend trips to Las Vegas, where using their skills of code talk and hand signals, very Gemini, they have been made they they have been made hundreds of thousands of dollars in winning blackjack at casino after casino. Who writes this? It's horribly written. Ben only wants to make enough money for the tuition to Harvard and then back out. But as a fellow card counter, Jill Taylor predicts. Ben becomes corrupted by greed. So here's the taglines. Inspired by the true story of five students who changed the game forever, they proved the Vegas blackjack system was beatable by beating the hell out of it. Next film, Beetlejuice. So Beetlejuice is an older film. It was released in 1988. Here's the storyline. Adam and Barbara are a normal couple who happen to be dead. They have given their precious time to decorate their house and make it to their own and make it their own. But unfortunately, a family is moving in and not quietly. Adam and Barbara try to scare them out, but end up becoming the main attraction to the money-making family. 
They call upon Beetlejuice to help, but Beetlejuice has more in mind than just helping. Actually, it was my Scorpio sister back in the day that put me on to this movie because when I first saw it, I didn't really pay attention and it went over my head, just like Napoleon Dynamite. But of course, it would take my Scorpio sister, Scorpio rules death, for uh, for me to get into it. So here's the tagline. Say it once, say it twice, but we dare you to say it three times, talking about the name Beetlejuice. Also, he's guaranteed to put some life in your afterlife. In this house, if you see one ghost, you haven't seen them all. The name and laughter from the hereafter. So one of the reasons why I chose this movie to watch during Gemini season is because Beetlejuice is a play upon the word Beetlejuice, which is spelled B-E-T-E-L-G-E-U-S-E, which is a fixed star at the 28th degree of Gemini. And this fixed star can produce calamities, danger, and violence. And basically that's what Beetlejuice in this film is representing because he's supposed to get rid of the living by scaring the hell out of them. But he, so he's scary, but funny at the same time, which is very Gemini. And Beetlejuice is played by Michael Keaton. And Michael Keaton is a very talented actor. He has a very wide te- uh, acting range. And just seeing him in action is very reminiscent of Gemini. Now he doesn't have any Gemini in his chart. He happens to be a Virgo, but he's born on the fifth, which is very much like Gemini energy. So him being a five birth number enables him to just go out on a limb with the humor like he did. I think a lot of his uh, scenes were uh, improvised. So it's a very clever plot dealing with life after death. And if you saw my live stream last night on Gemini season, I talked about the lover's card in tarot and how that corresponds to Gemini. So the lover's motif can be seen in this film as well through Adam and Barbara, but also when Beetlejuice tries to get married to um, Winona Ryder's character, I forget her name. But anyway, yeah, so there's some strong Gemini themes in this movie, namely because of the fixed star Beetlejuice that's at the 28th degree of Gemini. So I thought that was pretty cool. Next movie, Vanilla Sky. So Vanilla Sky stars Tom Cruise, Cameron Diaz is also in it, as well as Penelope Cruz. Oh my God, that Penelope Cruz gets on my damn nerves. If you can get through her uh, annoying ass accent, then this movie is watchable, but she is hella annoying in my opinion. I'm not the only one who says that either. I feel like that accent is put on and she looks like a little drowned rat. But anyway, Vanilla Sky has some strong Gemini themes, mainly due to the mind fuck that Tom Cruise character goes through. Uh, basically, his mind is playing tricks on itself. It's a mind bending movie. It will take you from the past to the present, back and forth. It has dream sequences in it. So it really will occupy your mind, it will stimulate your mind. So it's a good movie to watch during Gemini season. Also, there's the car theme because he gets in a car accident, which results in him being disfigured. And that basically is the whole catalyst for everything else that happens in the film. But towards the end of the film, you start to understand why he's going crazy. So let me just read the storyline. So Vanilla Sky released in 2001. Incarcerated and charged with murder, David Ames Jr. is telling the story of how he got to where he is to McCabe, the police psychologist. So there's a lot here. So I'm just skip to the uh, nitty gritty. So let me see. His friends would benefit relationship with Julie Gianni, who saw their relationship in a slightly different light. His budding romance with Sophia Serrano, who Brian brought to David's party as his own date and who Brian saw as his own possible life mate. And being in an accident which disfigured his face and killed the person who caused the accident. But as the story proceeds, David isn't sure what is real and what is a dream slash nightmare as many facets of the story are incompatible. Now, here's the taglines. What is happiness to you? Is your subconscious your conscience? Is your conscience conscious your subconscious? Love, hate, dreams, life, work, play, friendship, sex. That's all one word. 
Love can be deceiving. Open your eyes, forget everything you know, and open your eyes. So Vanilla Sky, like I said, it's a mind-bending type of film. Uh, Cameron Diaz plays the chick that he was smashing, but she thought that they were in a real relationship. So she does a really good job playing the psycho chick. She's actually scary in this film because she does it so well. And then Penelope Cruz is playing against uh, Cameron Diaz character. Penelope Cruz is this more angelic figure in the film and basically Tom Cruise character falls in love with her, but they keep on alternating between Cameron Diaz and Penelope Cruz and he can't figure out who he's with. So that's very Gemini, the two women theme and all that. So if you haven't seen Vanilla Sky, definitely watch it. There, It is slow in some parts, so you might fall asleep. Because I did the first time I was watching it. But I watched it again recently, and I was like, yeah, this film is, it has some strong Gemini themes. Especially even dealing with the cars. In the beginning, there's this badass Ferrari that uh, Tom Cruise is driving, but he's dreaming about it. And last but not least, Trading Places. Trading Places is an older film released in 1983, starring Eddie Murphy, as you can see here, and also Dan Aykroyd. Jamie Lee Curtis is in the middle. Here's the storyline. Lewis Winthrop is a businessman who works for commodities brokerage firm of Duke and Duke, owned by the brothers Mortimer and Randolph Duke. So the whole brother theme is in here, which is very Gemini. Now they bicker over the most trivial of matters, very Gemini. And what they are bickering about is whether it's a person's environment or heredity that determines how well they will do in life. When Winthrop bumps into Billy Ray Valentine, that's Eddie Murphy's character, a street hustler, or you might as well say thug, which is very Gemini, and assumes he's trying to rob him, he has him arrested. Upon seeing how different the two men are, the brothers decide to make a wager as to what would happen if Winthrop loses his job, his home, and is shunned by everyone he knows, and if Valentine was given Winthrop's job. So they proceed to have Winthrop and arrested and to be placed in a compromising position in front of his girlfriend. So all he has to rely on is the hooker, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, who has hired to ruin him. Here's the taglines. They're not just getting rich, they're getting even some very funny business. Take two complete strangers, make one of them rich, the other poor, just watch the fun while they're trading places. Now the whole switcheroo theme is very Gemini, but also the play on words with trading places. So trading places deals with switching places, the rich man being exchanged with the poor man's life. But also this movie takes place, well, it has some strong stock market themes. So trading on the stock market. So it has a play upon words like that. So if you haven't seen this film, I'm sure a lot of my older viewers have seen this film. For my younger viewers, if you haven't seen this, definitely check it out. It's one of Eddie Murphy's first films. It's one of his better films, if you ask me. So that's that. That's my list of 10 movies to watch during Gemini season. What movies do you recommend watching during Gemini season? And if you would like a reading, you could go to my website at rabina.com. I'll be back with some more videos. Peace and many blessings.